Right, Ruth, question times, isn't it? Ooh. Yes. Uh, right. OK, have we got first Derek? I've got my coffee, by the way. Oh. I, got my, I get it every week at this point. It's here. Then carry on. He Enjoy. always has to have his coffee. He's a creature of habit. Where's Derek? I'm oh, hello, Derek. <laughs> uh, what would you like to ask him, then? I sort of chance to say on Wednesday's budget, that is looking at more people to have, like, say, long-term fixed-rate mortgages. Right. Um, is it a good idea, do you think? Yeah, it's very interesting. The, the budget announcement on this has been... Uh, what, what he's done... I mean, Gordon Brown announced this three years ago. They always want everyone to have long-term fixed-rate mortgages. It makes the economy more stable, and also it probably would help if we went into the euro, but we won't get onto that one. But the thing, what he's done now, what he said this week is, look, 25-year term mortgages, but we're going to make it easier for mortgage lenders because they'll borrow the money for these mortgages off the government, which means they get extra security. And on the back of that, we want them to give customers an option that they can get out of the deal if it's going to be too expensive. Now, if they actually deliver this, and this is only a consultation document, I have to tell you, but if they actually deliver this, then it might be quite a good idea. Because in the past, when they've talked about these long-term mortgages, the mortgage industry has gone, <laughs> we don't want them. <laughs> and consumers, or people telling people what consumers should be thinking, tend to go, <laughs> because they're not any cheaper. So all these, <laughs> frankly, means that no-one's wanted them in the past. But with this new deal, if they can pull it off, and, frankly, I give them about 10% chance, if they can pull it off, it might be something we should all be looking at. But let's wait and see. Budget announcements, budget discussion, budget flannel, frankly, sometimes. <laughs> we'll see if it actually does happen. Wait, what the, watch this space. Of course, I'll tell you if it's a good one once it is. OK. There we go. Happy? Thank you. Grand. Where's, where's Khaled? Okay. Oh, hello, Ooh. mate. Come forward. Uh, what would you like to ask him? Um, I recently started paying off my student loan. Good. Um, Ish. Do you think it's a good idea to try and pay it off in one big lump sum or just do it on a monthly payment as it, as it comes out of my account? Who knows the answer? Come on, before I give it. Yeah. Monthly. 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 What do you reckon? Monthly. Anyone? Th OK, hands up if you think lump sum. Anyone think lump sum? One thinking lump sum, two. Hands up if you think monthly. Yeah, and the, the monthlies have it, I have to say. Look, this is the reason. Student loan interest rate currently at 4.8% sounds a lot, but that's set at the rate of inflation. Inflation is the rate at which um, prices rise. So think of it like this. You go in to get your student loan, right, and you borrow £1,000, which would buy you a basket worth of goods in the supermarket. Now, forget the monetary value. If you pay it back in 20 years, because it's at the rate prices rise, all you have to pay back is the same basket worth of goods value in the supermarket. So your spending power by keeping the loan hasn't been diminished. That's the first. You with me so far? Yeah. OK. Now, this is the second point. How old are you? 25. Have you got a mortgage? No. Go, and going to need a loan for a car at some stage? Yeah, I might do, yeah. So you're going to want a mortgage? Mm, yep. Yeah, so you're going to want to borrow in the future. Mortgage rates are higher than the student loan rate. Um, car loans are much higher than the student loan rate. You could put that money into a savings account or a cash ISA, earn more interest after tax than it's costing you. So why pay off the cheapest long-term debt you will ever get, only to have to borrow it back from a commercial lender, a mortgage rate or a car loan later on in life? I wouldn't pay it off any more quickly, but I, wouldn't, I would take the extra savings you've got that you could pay it off with, put them into a high-interest cash ISA, Barclays, Have, Tax Haven, 6.5% right now is the top-paying cash ISA. I save 6.1% as an alternative. Tax-free savings account, put your money there, don't pay your student loan off any more quickly than you need to. Yep. Yep. Good. Right, Whew, right. Yeah. next Brilliant. one. Bring it on. Whew. He's on a roll. Where's Joel? Joel, are you on a roll? <laughs> Try. <laughs> Martin, what would you like to ask him? OK, Martin, I want to know, which is the best bank or credit card to use when travelling on holiday or business abroad? Oh, now I'm going to keep it simple. Have you got a nationwide bank account? The savings account with Nationwide. But not their bank account, not no. their Flex account. OK, the cheapest way to spend abroad is the Nationwide bank account and use their debit card. Absolutely bog-standard, cheaper than anything. There are lots of different charges that apply when you spend abroad. The most important one is the loading. So it works a bit like this. If you were to spend 100 quid's worth of euros on the Nationwide card, they would charge you 100 quid. On most credit cards, they add a load to the exchange rate, so 100 quid's worth of euros, standard low 2.75%, would cost you £102.75p. That's the exchange rate loading, wherever you are in the world. Then there's also cash handling fees, interest, and some nasty, nasty debit cards actually charge you each time you spend on them. You have to be careful of those. But rather than getting you to change bank account just for spending overseas, what I would do is get the cheapest credit card, which is the post office credit card. It has no loading, it has the lowest cash withdrawal fee if you do need to take money out, and its interest is lower than any other prohibitive special overseas card when it comes to spending overseas. 
far cheaper than using foreign currency, far cheaper than using traveller's checks, get a post office card, pay it off in full every month. Mm. Better to spend on it, though, than it is to take cash out on it, and that's absolutely the cheapest way to spend abroad. Mm. You'll probably cut your bill by about 5% on everything you spend when you're abroad. Wonderful. There we go. Thank you. Pleasure. Fantastic. Where's Zoe? Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that was that's convenient, convenient, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh. Nice one. What would you like to ask him? Um, my partner and I are looking to buy our first property together. Can you recommend a mortgage provider for first-time buyers? No. Charlie. Next. Um, <laughs> no, the answer to you is the same as we've been talking about in the programme. There is no one-size-fits-all provider, even for first-time buyers, because you need to go and do the research and mortgage broker plus the few that don't go to mortgage brokers. But I would ask you, how big a deposit have you got? About 10, 15 per cent. Well... <laughs> well, how old are you? 24. Brilliant. <laughs> because I tell you what really annoys me. Well done. A round of applause, please, from me. I'll tell you why in a minute. <laughs> Look. I get deeply frustrated by people in their early 20s who've watched the property porn television shows. That's what I call them. These shows that say, you've got to own a house. Renting's a dirty word. Buy a house! It's wonderful! And actually, they pushed us all into owning property when we can't afford it, and you should never stretch your finances. You have a good deposit. You've saved it up. That's absolutely the right thing to do. And so now, I was going to say, oh, you haven't got much of a deposit at your age. I think you should consider whether it's really worth buying a house or you should save up. But you've done the right thing. 10% deposit, that's what you're going to need these days in the days of the credit crunch. If you haven't got a big enough deposit, it's going to be a problem. You need to go make an appointment with a mortgage broker, whole of market, preferably fees-free, do your research first, listen to this programme, you will get a good deal, own your house, but don't overstretch yourself. Just because they'll lend you the money doesn't mean you should borrow all of it. If they overlend you, you have to get their other lending, their credit cards and loans to survive, and they're going... <laughs> <laughs> you set the agenda yourself, don't let them. Well done, congratulations to you and your partner. I like that. Are you happy? <laughs> good, good, well done. No time for any more questions. We'd love to do that all day. But, Martin, thank you for that financial insight and practical advice. That was brilliant, wasn't it? Let's give him a clap. Oh, yeah. I get one as well. Lovely.